Today we have a patient with a white count of 64, which is a bit high, and the plate the count is 84, which is low. Okay, let's look at the blood film. Oh, that's a blast cell. Oh, and that's a blast cell too. Oh, and that's one. Oh, this is a lot of blast cells. Ooh. Okay, people, this looks bad, but we've trained long and hard for this. We can handle it, but first, Always follow your institution's policies, procedures, and guidelines. Soon as I look down a microscope and see a picture like this, this, or this, I know there's a high probability of an acute leukemia. Therefore, until I can confirm otherwise or get the results called to the patient's physician, I need to move quickly. So the first thing that needs to occur is getting a differential performed. Before starting, I will scan the slide specifically looking for neutrophils. The physician needs to know the patient's ability to fight infections, making this count as crucial as the blast count. If newts are easy to find, I will start my differential in any spot I normally would. However, if the slide is packed with blasts and neutrophils are scarce, I will begin my count wherever I find a neutrophil. I can see some of you looking at me weirdly, but when a sample is counted on an analyzer, it counts thousands of cells. So it will usually come across some neutrophils. Since I'm not doing a thousand cell differential, this method will ensure that I am not giving a zero neutrophil count when the patient has some. Keeping with differentials, I will do a 200 cell diff during the initial diagnosis of an acute leukemia. This is because it will spread the inherent error that comes from doing a manual differential among more cells. Also in the case of really high counts, it will increase the chances you will move to another microscope field. I have had patients where one microscope field had close to 100 cells. While doing your differential, you will scan each blast for hour rods. If you remember from my blast cell video, this is the only way to identify microscopically if the blast cell is a myeloblast. Otherwise, we are waiting for flow cytometry or special stains. On looking at the blast cells, we will also need to keep a lookout for this shape in blast cell or promyelocyte. This butterfly nuclear shape indicates that this may be an acute promyelocytic leukemia or APL. The reason being that patients with this type of acute leukemia have an increased probability of going into disseminated intravascular coagulation, also known as DIC. DIC is when there is abnormal clotting without vascular injury and is a potentially deadly condition. If the physician knows early enough, they can pre-treat a patient to prevent this, and in some cases, if they only know that the blasts are myeloid, they will pre-treat them since it will not cause undue harm. So now you have done all this, you need to call this information to the patient's physician. You're going to tell them the blast count, both absolute and relative values, because the percentage can decide if the patient is considered to have an acute leukemia. Generally, 20% is a threshold for adults, but even a low count can direct the physician to order a bone marrow, which can be packed with blast cells. You will also be telling the physician if you saw hour rods or if there is the possibility that the shape of the cells is indicative of APL. After the call is complete, put that CBC sample in a safe location because the physician will probably order further testing such as special stains or flow cytometry. But you can pat yourself on the back because you know you handled this situation. However, we always need to keep our skills sharp. So check out this video on the screen to continue you on your hematology journey. Thank you for watching. Until next time.